Well, this first week of the new year, we're taking a look inside your brain. Yesterday, we saw how new discoveries about the brain are changing how marketers go after your dollars. Tonight, the connection between motivation and evolution. Since the beginning of time, humans have tended to do what feels good, an impulse controlled by the brain. Now, neuroscientists are starting to unravel how something that was a positive impulse thousands of years ago can be detrimental to human survival today. Here's Kelly Crow with The Pleasure Principle. As neuroscience probes ever deeper into the human brain, researchers marvel at its evolutionary genius, a mysterious tangle of neural tissue shaped by a bitter struggle for survival. We were molded by the environment, by the ancestral environment that we developed in. And that environment only changed recently. We only started farming 10,000 years ago. And we only started building cities in the last seven or 8,000 years. And we've only had electricity for a, for a hundred years. Mostly we are Stone Age creatures. We have pretty much the same brain now. So it's pretty good on the left, but it's maybe a bit dorsal on the right. At understand? Queen's University, Richard Benninger is a behavioral neuroscientist studying the intricate neural networks wired by primal impulses. Why is a child afraid of the dark, but not afraid of the busy road? Those children who crawled into dark environments were taken by predators and lost, so they didn't reproduce themselves. And the ones who reproduced themselves were afraid of the dark, like we are. Right? But we're not afraid of the road, and the road is really dangerous. Lots and lots of children and adults are, are injured and killed on the road, but we don't have the fear of it. An example of how humans are navigating the 21st century with brains that evolved to solve ancient problems. So it's quite possible that the kind of environment we find ourselves in, the crowded, busy, technologically heavy environment that we find ourselves in, uh, has many characteristics that we're not particularly well adapted to. Through adaptation, the brain evolved reward pathways to motivate human behavior. If it feels good, do it again. A powerful force in human survival. Our brain kind of thinks, wow, that felt good. I guess that's really important for me to have that. Our brain doesn't know it's not good for us. All that pleasure-seeking behavior, every touch, smell, taste, and desire, starts as an electrical signal traveling along a neuron and sparking a chemical reaction in the brain. It's certainly extraordinary. I mean, it's, you know, our entire experience of life, all of our mental experiences, if, if they all result from the activity of chemistry in our brain, of interacting neuro neurotransmitters and, and neural circuits, it's... it's uh, it's amazing. So when you're chasing too much of a good thing, technically it's not your fault. You could blame it on your dopamine neurons found deep inside a primitive part of the brain. These are very old circuits. They're found in fish and in all uh, vertebrates. They're very old, these dopamine neurons. Which means the same chemical reactions that lead a crocodile to water also lead a human to beer. Dopamine neurons are activated. Whatever's being encountered at the time, it's a stronger ability to attract in the future. So for an animal in the wild, food-related stimuli, so things that signal food, like a particular place, a particular object, then acquire the ability to draw the animal in the future. Dopamine does its work through a form of unconscious learning shaping environmental cues into neural triggers, sights, sounds, smells, feelings, that lead us back to the thing that tripped our reward pathway, even if that thing is dangerous. So drugs, drugs that are abused by people, all of them activate the dopamine system. Increasingly, scientists also believe food can hijack the brain's reward system. Highly processed food with combinations of salt, sugar, fat, and flavors found nowhere in nature. Because they're so palatable, we tend to eat a lot of them. And they give us a, a greater dopamine boost um, than broccoli does. 
York University professor Carolyn Davis is researching the biological basis of food addiction. The things that are loaded with sugar, loaded with fat, um, salt, in combination, they're very, very hard to resist. And, you know, there is evidence that if you eat enough of these foods in some vulnerable people, not everybody, but in some vulnerable people, they display behavior that is very, very similar to um, the behavior that we see in other addicts. When lab rats are given access to sugary food, they binge. And when the sugar is taken away, they show physical withdrawal symptoms that resemble the animal's withdrawal from heroin. One of the pathways activated in these sugar-addicted mice? Dopamine. And there seems to be a particular dopamine link in food-addicted humans. That's one of Carolyn Davis's discoveries. People that tend to be very sensitive to rewards, our data suggests maybe it might be more difficult for them in this environment where they're surrounded by uh, very pleasurable things. In another era, it would have been probably quite adaptive because they would have just got a great pleasure out of food and they would be the ones that packed on the pounds and survived longer. But it doesn't work so well in this environment. The rattle can be placed in here. On dopamine disruption can be catastrophic. Watch what happens when the dopamine system is disturbed in these animals. With normal dopamine, the rat gets down from the bar immediately. It doesn't like that position. But when it is given a drug that blocks its dopamine receptors, something strange happens. And, and what you're going to see is the rat go on the bar and stay there. Wow. Go. That's the phenomenon. It isn't that it can't move. Okay? It just doesn't want to. Well, that's the question, and that's what we're really interested in. It's called catalepsy. I'm still struggling to try to understand the implications of this condition, catalepsy. So this is an exciting finding. I think so. I think I think that there's some real valuable new information in this paradigm, in this phenomenon. Benninger says it might hold clues to brain disorders like Parkinson's disease, which is associated with a loss of movement and reduced dopamine. Other research suggests dopamine shapes our relationships. When you meet someone who is cooperative, friendly, dopamine neurons fire, leaving an unconscious imprint that this is a person we might seek out again. That person, which is a representation in my brain, by the action of dopamine, gains an enhanced ability to attract me in the future. So the dopamine sculpts a social landscape of people that we interact with. Understand dopamine, and researchers might be able to explain some basic human behavior. You can only marvel more as you begin to learn more about the chemistry and the chemical neuroanatomy of the brain, and you think it's, it's all of that working together that creates my mental experience that is my whole life. So as neuroscientists are discovering how the multiple colors and hues of human behavior are created out of a paint box of brain chemicals, they're also painting the ultimate portrait of the human experience. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Kingston, Ontario.